Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Monday, March 15th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The Minnesota game is in 171 days, the game against Michigan in 257 days. Ohio State is officially headed back to the NCAA tournament as a two seed. The Buckeyes will be a 17 point favorite when they face 15th seed Oral Roberts in the first round. That comes on the heels of a dramatic run to overtime in the Big Ten Tournament Championship game on Sunday. My guest today is Buckeye Scoop's Tony Gerdeman. He spent the weekend in Indianapolis covering an absolutely wild weekend of basketball. So if his audio sounds a little wonky, we apologize. That's why. Uh, Tony, though, that had to be one of the craziest four-day runs of games that you've ever watched, at least in person, I would assume. It was. Every single game felt like, well, I guess we're going to go home after this. Like, t- t- uh, you know, cancel the hotel, check out early, and just plan on uh, going home that day. And then a funny thing would happen on the way to the buzzer. And, and uh, it was each game. They could have given up each game. And instead, they were here until Sunday. I think pretty much everybody on the Ohio State beat had to book some hotels you know, for Saturday night because of how things went. Uh, it was crazy. It was. And there were two overtime games, games that uh, Ohio State let get away, should we say. And, and yet here they were on Sunday with uh, a chance to win the game down the stretch. And, uh, you know, we say like the committee doesn't watch this game, but I think they maybe actually watch this one. Yeah, this is uh, I, I think overall my takeaway from the the, uh, the committee seating was the committee had a lot of respect for the Big Ten this year. Uh, they released the overall seatings and four of the top seven teams were Big Ten teams. So, you know, the, the result of that is, hey, you're playing a lot of teams ranked in the top seven and you probably have wins over a whole bunch of them and that makes your resume stronger. So. That was that was definitely interesting. Also, if you are not a sports writer, let me tell you how much sport writer, sports writers hate games, writing about games that come down to the absolute wire every day. It's just you you think you have a story written and, you know, hey, Ohio State's up by a million against Purdue at halftime. I can write my game story already. No, friend. No, you cannot. Let's let's just run through. Let's run through Tony's weekend in Indianapolis and uh, we'll see what conclusions we can draw from this. Ready? Thursday night, Ohio State nearly blew a 14 point lead with less than 330 to go. So get down to one. Then they won by four. Okay, Friday, up by 18 at the half. Oh, it'll be easy. Then they watch Purdue slowly chip away, force overtime before the Buckeyes finish strong for a nine-point win. Saturday, up by 11 with less than three and a half to go. They scored exactly one more point the last three and a half minutes, which was just enough because they won by one. And then Sunday, it was exactly the opposite. Illinois was the team that jumped out to a huge first-half lead. They were up 17 points at 27 to 10. And honestly, I, I went outside to go do something with my family came back later. It was like, whoa, 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 what the heck just happened? And, you know, they got it down to five and a half, briefly took the lead in the second half, then fell behind by six with under two minutes to play. And then, you know, while they were blowing those big leads earlier in the weekend, they were down by six. All of a sudden, boom, rally for, to uh, tie it, send it to overtime before they finally fall then. So with all of that insanity, huge, huge leads, blown leads, dramatic comebacks, overtime wins, overtime loss, you know, what, what do you make of this? Like, what 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 is our, what is the takeaway here from that insane series of games as far as what it actually means for this team as it head in, heads into the NCAA's? My takeaway is the same as Chris Holtman's, which is this was a very resilient team to even aside from these four games to bounce back from their four game losing streak and then win the games as they did. They they probably they could have lost every single one of those and they held on. And won whatever, you know, however it took, of course, except for this last one. But yeah, I, I think what I take away is that when this team is on, they're really, really good. When they're off, they still have a little something to, you know, get it at the end. Maybe not always pretty, but it's usually effective. But that's, I mean, it's it's a dangerous way to play the game, the way they do it. And um, they were able to... Uh, play it as long as any team could, you know, for the Big Ten tournament. They played, you know, four nights, played four games, 50 minutes or 45 minutes in two of those. And really, I just, you know, it, it's a group that doesn't get too down on itself, even when they are tired. You can see, like, you know, down like three and a half minutes to go, I could see C.J. Walker just trying to catch Brad as he's bringing the ball up court. Same with Dwayne Washington and E.J. Liddell. I think he left. 95% of the shot short against Illinois because the legs weren't there. You can just see that. And 
when they were down 17 in the first half, you're like, this makes complete sense. You know, that, that they, you know, this, they've been without Kyle Young for two full games at this point. And yeah, it was, uh, you know, this, this was kind of what you expected just for Illinois to roll. It was their first time they played in a road environment when the crowd was 85%, 80% Illinois. And so this was the first time the Buckeyes had to deal with that as well this year because there have been no partisan crowds. And it was – they were tested in a lot of ways. And they came back from a 17-point deficit, took a lead, and, uh, you know, just, just didn't, didn't have enough down the stretch. But they came back from 17 points down against a very good team. That tells you that there may not be a, a situation that they can't handle – in the tournament. In, unless they have a big lead at halftime, right? They might right. Not, I mean, <laughs> and that's, I mean, I think at this point, everything is going to get framed through the, through the lens of the NCAA tournament. Cause that's kind of where we are at this point. They were down 17 points in the first half against a team that is now a number one seed in the tournament. Like this was not like, Oh, they played a bad team. You know, this wasn't, you know, the Minnesota game where it was like, well, they played a bad team, a bad game against a bad team, but they won. Like this was, they got off to a terrible start against it. one of the best teams in the nation, took the lead in the second half, got it to overtime, and then ultimately ran out of gas. I mean, you, you mentioned Kyle Young there, so I'll, I'll ask you for an update on Kyle Young. But also, I kind of just want to know, they, they seemed a little subdued in the locker room when CBS showed them on the broadcast. Was the mood kind of subdued from the players after that you talked to? Um, so just you know where where their mindset is coming off that game and off that tournament run, and also the late the latest on the status of Kyle Young going into the NCAA's. Yeah, Kyle Young was with the team. He's in the locker room with with them uh, for this game. No update yet. Not sure. Chris Holman said after the game, he's not sure when he'll know more. But uh, you know, we'll see if we hear anything tomorrow about his status. I don't know that they even need to tell us tomorrow since they don't play until Friday. Uh, but he, Holman did say it's going to take some time for the guys to get over this one. It probably helps for a number of reasons that they have they have a Friday game instead of a Thursday. It gives them time to heal and rest, but it also gives them some time to deal with this and then move on. C.J. Walker, after the game, I think was the only player that we talked to, and he was his usual steady self and just got to play better during down the stretch. Just got to be stronger, got to be tougher, that, that sort of thing. And, uh, so that's that's – you know, they were subdued because this loss hurt because they were there. They had that. You know, if you come back like that and then you lose it, it's almost, is that worse than just getting blown out by 30? I think. Yeah. I mean, that you can, you can at least kind of, if they lost that by 30, you know, down by 17 in the first half and it just kind of turns into a 25 point, you know, that that's maybe a little bit like the national championship game for football where it's just, you know, you had an injury, Things just didn't go their way, and it just kind of it just it was not their night. This one, yeah, that that was both inspiring and disheartening all at once. And you know, th- so looking ahead, though, I mean, you mentioned the Friday game, and that that is a big deal for this team because they're, you I mean, that, that was four straight just absolute battles that they had to fight. Now you got a couple days you can get your legs back onto you, which will help a lot. They also, it seems like they got a favorable draw relatively in the tournament, and part of that I think is. I mentioned earlier the Big Ten, the respect for the Big Ten that the committee was showing four of the top seven. Ohio State was the sixth team overall in that S-curve. They are not in Gonzaga's region. That helps. So they, we mentioned they face Oral Roberts in the first round. If they beat Oral Roberts, it's either Florida or Virginia Tech in the second round. The Sweet 16 is either Arkansas, Texas Tech, Utah State, or Colgate. Ohio State is seventh in the Ken Palm rankings. And if you don't know what Ken Palm is, you'll probably find out about it this week as people are talking about filling out their brackets. Um, Arkansas is the next highest team on this, on that side of the bracket and they're 18th. So, you know, it seems like Ohio state should, you know, just if you want to go off the ratings should be a comfortable favorite to at least get to the elite eight at that point, Baylor is the number one seed in the region. That's the lowest ranked of the four one seeds in Ken Palm. Uh, Purdue is the four seed on the other side of the bracket. So if it's not Baylor, it's a team Ohio state just beat this week. I mean, this is this seems to me like this is not a bad draw for Ohio State. Was there any kind of consensus there uh, about how the bracket shook out for Ohio State? I'm guessing Chris Holtman didn't go. Yeah, we got a sweet draw. But you know, was there was there any kind of consensus among the folks you talked to there, or, or uh, your your thoughts on yeah. the, on Ohio State's draw? The, the funny thing is, Holtman said he only looked to see who they were playing, and then 
who they make, might play after that. He didn't know who the number one in their region was or anything like that. Um, but yeah, you, you're right. If you can make it to the Elite Eight, then there's no more ducking opponents. Then, then that's when the thing starts. And so, um, you know, Michigan and Illinois being on the opposite side of, of things, I thought that was interesting to where uh, they kept like the top four teams, the Big Ten separated and allowed them to, uh, I don't know, maybe meet in the final four, all you know, four Big Ten teams. But um, you know, I, I think everybody just, that I was talking to here was basically uh, you just want to avoid Gonzaga. And then if you can avoid Gonzaga for as long as possible, then good on you. And then maybe hope, hope somebody else can beat them and you look at what they have and, you know, we'll see. Um, but, you know, Gonzaga does have a history of that sort of thing. But Baylor themselves have, have been uh, outstanding this, this year. And I think that's – that sounds like a fun matchup to me if, if both teams could get there. I know uh, Baylor, Baylor's got some tricky things going on pretty early in their in their run, though, too. So we'll see. Yeah, and and there's a whole bunch of uh, question marks right now about all sorts of teams for all sorts of different reasons. you got injury questions with Michigan and Isaiah Livers. You've got some COVID questions going on right now. Ohio University is supposed to play Virginia in the first round of the tournament, and it's like, well... Virginia's got some questions on that front right now. So will they get to play that game? Will they get swapped in with someone else? There's there's a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of things that'll make this an exciting mystery for us all to enjoy this week. Um, one more question for you though, Tony, and and this is just I don't want to say the greatest outrage in human history, but Appalachian State is a 16 seed, Michigan is a one seed, and the committee did not seed them together. Like, how could they possibly possibly pass up that opportunity? They are thieves of joy with uh, no semblance for poetry and what makes the heart grow fonder. And yeah, you got to put those two together. It's for no other reason than, although maybe they didn't want to pay the rights to the Big Ten Network to keep showing highlights of the of that game. That, that's probably what it was. They just, you know what? Just ignore it completely. It'll cost too much money and we'll never recoup it for this game. Yeah, the, the Appalachian State University bookstore, I'm sure, was hoping hoping for that and hoping for another win and uh, a whole bunch more sales to the state of Ohio for some some strange reason. A lot of lot of Ohioans ending up on the Appalachian store uh, bookstore mailing uh, mailing list. So, boy, this is going to be a fun week. It'll uh, we are uh, counting down now to Friday, which will be the start of Ohio State's tournament run. We, it also is also going to be the start of Ohio State's spring football practice. We're uh, we have been promised uh, by our uh, friends at Ohio State that we will get a chance to talk to Ryan Day and perhaps some other assistants and players later on this week. So we're going to have a whole bunch of football coverage. We are going to have a whole bunch of basketball coverage. There is just a ton going on. And uh, it is NCAA Women's Hockey Tournament Week as well. The women's hockey team is uh, dropping the puck in Erie, Pennsylvania. They are three wins from a national championship and uh, one of the favorites to potentially do that. This is going to be a really, really fun week at BuckeyeScoop.com, which means, hey, this would be a great week for you to become a member of BuckeyeScoop.com because there is going to be a lot to talk about. You can just go to BuckeyeScoop.com to sign up right there, uh, get access to all of our great content, our Ask the Insiders board, which is humming this week. Our game threads have been uh, very active for the uh, for basketball, and I'm guessing we'll only get more active as, uh, as the tournament rolls on, plus uh, spring football, lots to talk about there. Some uh, really, really interesting, interesting positional battles to follow, and uh, all all the uh, all the other great stuff you come to expect at BuckeyeScoop.com. Also, make sure to check out check out all of our great podcasts. We're gonna have lots to talk about this week. Just search Buckeye Scoop on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, Spreaker, you name it, we're there. Just search Buckeye Scoop. You can subscribe right there. Also, last thing, YouTube.com/slash Buckeye Scoop. Go right there. Hit that subscribe button. We have uh, post-game interviews from players and coaches. We'll have uh, football interviews there later this week. We'll have basketball interviews previewing the NCAA tournament this week. We have uh, podcasts there, all sorts of great stuff. Mick Walker just did a uh, Southern tour of high school football uh, teams that uh, a number of uh, recruits you're going to need to know about. That's all going to be there as well as at BuckeyeScoop.com. So go to YouTube.com slash BuckeyeScoop, hit subscribe. And uh, you'll get a notification every time all that stuff. Anytime we post a new video, you'll just get a little notification and you, it'll uh, be real easy for you to put those right in your eyeballs. It'll be great. So uh, that'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for listening and we will talk to you tomorrow.